we've done lab four and this is p spice for network analysis and in this lab well we are given a transient circuit and it's an rc circuit so it's going to look something like this this is the current uh circuit we're going to build that in p spice we also need to find the maximum step size we are going to take the total runtime and divide it by the number of steps well, the total runtime is five times t, or this, uh, I think it's like a time domain, and it is divided by 500. To do this math, I wrote this uh, little explanation out here with the total runtime being five milliseconds. We plug this into the formula that we have for maximum step size. We're going to have the five times, and we know the total runtime we found in the pre-lab for this, which is not a video, but take my word on it, will be five times 10 to the negative three because it's in milliseconds divided by 500. This will give us 0 0.05 times 10 to the negative three. So this is going to be the maximum step size and that is going to come into play when we are actually creating our graph and putting it into a lab. We're going to go into the our virtual desktop. We're going to go into PSpice through cadence released and capture CIS. Click OK to Allegro, and it's going to load up like this. We're then going to click a new project. And in this new project, I'm just going to call it RC underscore AC. We want to make sure PSPICE analog is collect and the location wherever we want is selected. We're then going to press OK and create based on a blank project. And now we have this loaded. We're going to want to go into place part. We have a library and if the library uh, of parts is not in here, I'm gonna see if it is. If I type in VDC, we get nothing. So the correct library is not selected. We're gonna need to go in here and select all of these .olb files, and we're gonna click open. Now we can see when I type in VDC, it comes up. So we're going to press enter. It's going to take us back over here. We can zoom in a little bit with control and then the scroll wheel. We'll place this bad boy down and then we want a resistor so we're just going to type in i think r r will get us a resistor we'll press enter we'll place it here and then for a capacitor we just want to type c and we'll press enter and bring this over here we want to rotate this so we'll press escape to get rid of that make sure that's selected and click rotate we're going to go to the right click place wire and we're going to drag a wire between these now that we have this, we need a ground, so we're going to go over to the right again. We're going to place ground, zero capsum, place it right here, grab the wire again, and just connect it to our circuit. Now, there's a few things that we need to change. The first is that this is not going to be zero VDC. This is going to be a 10 VDC. We will move this over here, and then our R is good at one kilo ohm. We are then going to keep our C1, but we need this to be a one microfarad instead of a nanofarad, so we're going to do one U. Press OK here. Next thing that we need to do is make our V out right here because we have some voltage going over this node. We're going to go into place on the top menu. We're going to go down a little bit and actually in the middle, and then we're going to want to place net alias with the N. So we'll click that and we're just going to type in V out, leave everything else the same, and press OK. And then we're going to place it right here. So that is our V out. And with this done, we can go up to our P spice. We can click New Simulation Profile. We need to name it something, so we'll just call it Transient. Then we can click Create. And from here, this little box will pop up on the bottom. We'll click this Allegro P spice Simulator, press OK. It's going to take us into here. There's some options we can change, but we want the time domain because we're dealing with time. Our runtime is going to be five microseconds. This is from the pre-lab. So we'll just type in five MS here. The start saving data after is zero seconds. The maximum step size, we found that earlier with the calculation to be 0 0.05. And this is being multiplied by 10 to the negative three or milliseconds. I think I said micro here. If I did, that uh, is supposed to be milli as well. So we're going to click OK, and then we are going to click Run, the green button at the top. Once we do this, that is going to happen. I did forget something, though. Um, we can see that this V out is 10. 
it should be 20 microvolts. And the reason why it is not 20 microvolts, and I'm going to actually close this uh, window, it should be a graph window. I'm gonna close that is because we did not change this capacitor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to this capacitor and I'm going to double click the actual capacitor. We can see this chart pops up. If it doesn't pop up like this, if you click this uh, white part at the very top um, left, right above the actual list, you can move it like this. Double clicking it again moves it like this. And we are going to want to change our IC to zero. If we press enter, we can go back to page one. It'll give us an undo warning. We just press yes. That just tells us that things are going to change. And then we can click run again. So after we run this, we are gonna get 20 microvolts here. And that is the correct answer. So I'm going to move these out of the way a little bit. And then I can take a screenshot of this because these are the results we need for our circuit schematic. And then I'm gonna come over to this other window. And once in here, we see that we go from zero seconds to five microseconds. We have our total step size, which is correct. And from here, we wanna go up and click trace. We wanna click add a trace. Now we only want to graph our voltages, so we're gonna unclick currents and unclick power. We want to graph our V out, so we're gonna click that and press OK. We can see that this comes up. Now it's kinda of hard to see, so we are going to go into tools and options. We're gonna go into color settings and make the uh, background, it should be good white, but, the, um, but that's how you would change the background. And to go and change the actual uh, line of this graph, we're gonna uh, left click it, then right click it, and we are going to click trace property. This menu will pop up, we can change the color. I'll go with this one, and most importantly change the width. Press okay, and then we get this. And then we can screenshot these results for our graph. And then after that, that should go in output, underneath circuit schematic, and both our circuit schematic and most importantly, this output will have a description along with it. And that is how you would do the first part, basic part of the slab. Everything else is pretty similar, just a little different to this.